Hey everyone, I'm Chris, and I'm here to rank the episodes of Game of Thrones Season 1 from worst to best. Game of Thrones is my number one favorite show, and I've begun my marathon rewatch for the final season premiering in April. Season 1 of Game of Thrones is often cited as the most accurate to the books, and also the one with the most exposition. This is the season where every new viewer is a sweet summer child, unaware of the dangers ahead. Ned Stark is everyone's favorite good guy hero, and Joffrey is a despicable douche. Okay, maybe some things don't change in later seasons. But it's also what established the show as a force to be reckoned with and introduces plenty of amazing characters for them to get killed off suddenly. So without further ado, let us rank Game of Thrones Season 1 from worst to best. At the bottom, number 10, we have Episode 3, Lord Snow. This is the slowest and most set up episode of the season. There's a lot of exposition and characters being introduced, no standout moments really at all. In fact, most of the scenes are just kind of characters sitting around talking about things that we need to know about. And also the ending is among the weakest endings of any Game of Thrones episode in my opinion. It's literally just Ned getting PTSD flashbacks while watching Arya spar with her dancing master. A lot of times, even when you have a slow episode of Game of Thrones, you can always count on them ending strong, but even in this one, they don't quite nail it, unfortunately. At number nine, we have episode four, Cripples, Bastards, and Broken Things. This this is another slow setup y episode, but it does have a little bit more going on than Lord Snow. Catelyn calling upon her bannerman to seize Tyrion is a solid cliffhanger ending, making you want to see what happens next. So, like I said before, even if you have a slow episode, the ending should always be nailed. Also, we have the Joust, which is a fun classic medieval staple, and it's very enjoyable. Number eight, The King's Road. All right, so now we're getting better. This episode would be higher if the first half was a little more exciting. The fallout of Bran's fall ends up being a slow burn, and the fact that no one finds out the truth leaves you sort of hanging and disappointed throughout the episode. But the interaction between the Starks as they leave each other make repeat viewings heartbreaking. Standout moments include Summer taking down the Cat's Paw assassin and the first and second half of Nymeria's attack on Joffrey. The entire last 10 minutes of this episode is awesome. Like, honestly, if I was just ranking the ending bits, it would be a cyan. But unfortunately, we do have a lot of build-up to get to there, so this episode ends up being a green overall. But honestly, that Nymeria attack is awesome. I mean, I remember when Joffrey almost killed Arya and just drops the sea bomb out of nowhere. This kid who looks like he's 16 years old, and he just has to call this 11-year-old girl to see where it's just like, whoa, okay. And like, that really surprised me and solidified my hatred for Joffrey. And also the subsequent investigation and, unfortunately, the execution of Lady is really tragic and fantastically done. Number seven, The Wolf and the Lion. All right, so this episode starts strong and ends strong, which is fantastic. The middle is filled with some exposition and setup -y stuff, but mostly it's the last of the setup for the season. As soon as we end this episode, everything starts kicking off. Standout moments include the mountain's meltdown, literally chopping the head off of his horse. That never fails to get a reaction out of people. And of course, the Hound versus the Mountain, Clegane Bowl V1, oh yeah. <laughs> and also Ned versus Jamie, which I award as a silver moment. Sure, the choreography isn't that great compared to later seasons, but the stakes behind this long-awaited duel hypes me up so much. I love the slow realization on Jamie's face when he realizes this aged, honorable fool can match him in a duel. That's just amazing. I mean, we all wanted to see these two fight, and we got it. Bonus points for Jamie knocking out that guard prick who interrupted the fight. Number six, Winter is Coming, the pilot. Now this pilot is sort of a mixed bag. While on one hand, it is full of exposition and characters and knowledge dumps, and for the most part devoid of really any conflict until the last 10 minutes, it is so well done and I have so much nostalgia for it that I have to award this episode the spot. When you rewatch this episode after seeing the whole series, it is mind blowing how much foreshadowing is in this pilot. Stand up moments are Tyrion's famous advice to Jon about being a bastard, one of my favorite quotes from the show, and Bran being pushed from the tower, which I would definitely award as a silver I remember when that happened, I was immediately hooked on the show. I mean, I was literally hooked after the first episode. That never happens. It shocked me so much because the episode had set up this little 10-year-old boy as a very important character, and I honestly thought they had just killed him off. Well played, Game of Thrones. Number five, episode seven, you win or you die. Stuff's kicking off now, we're in it. The entire second half of the season is great and the reason why Game of Thrones is always worth the payoff. This episode has a lot going on. I mean, first of all, King Robert suddenly shows up dying in the first 15 minutes. Like, whoa, one of the most important characters just suddenly dies, goodbye. This is where Game of Thrones is really establishing itself as willing to kill off literally anyone very suddenly. And I'll also miss Robert. I mean, that guy was just hilarious. He has so many funny quotes. Stand up moment for the episode is the ending betrayal from Peter Baelish. I mean, geez, this world truly is unfair to the honorable. 
Number four, episode six, A Golden Crown. So this episode is when the season officially was done with the setup. The fallout from Jamie's attack on Ned Stark is very interesting, and the overall doom looming over our characters is just palpable. Standout moments include Tyrion's trial by combat, which is very well done and teaches you a lesson in fighting well versus fighting smart. But the silver moment, and the moment that makes the episode, is obviously Viserys' crowning, one of the most satisfying deaths of the whole show. Not only is it long overdue for this annoying character to die, but he dies in one of the most brutal and poetic ways possible. All the while, Daenerys, his sister, watches approvingly. Awesome. Number three, episode eight, the pointy end. Gearing up for war, this is one of the quickest an episode begins lit. Lots of killing, and the tragic last stand of Sirio is definitely a standout moment. Oh, and who can forget Drogo defeating a warrior barehanded and ripping his tongue out for good measure? That's a standout moment for sure. I love that Rob is finally given proper screen time and takes action to march against the feared Lannisters with courage and passion and wit too. He's just one of my favorite characters. Also, John fighting off a of white is a cool moment that honestly feels like a horror movie at times. Tyrion's wit is in full display here, and the fear of Ned dying seeps throughout the entire higher runtime. Bonus thing, I love the title of this episode. Obviously it references Arya's lesson of stick them with the pointy end, but I also interpret it as death, the pointy end of the blade that everyone faces in the end, especially knowing that a certain character meets their pointy end soon. Number 2, Episode 9, Baylor. The first episode 9 of the series. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a really good episode. Not quite worth ranking a blue, but it's pretty fantastic. Practically every scene serves a great importance and many revelations are made. War officially begins, and even though they didn't have the budget to show the battle, the intensity has still been raised for the series. Standout moments include Tyrion's tragic story about his wife Tysha, and the whole blood magic fiasco with Drogo's horse being slit open. What is it with this season and horses? And Jorah's duel with Kotho? But of course, the moment that makes this episode the first golden moment of Game of Thrones is Ned Stark's death. I could talk for hours about this single moment. If you weren't hooked on the show before this, you certainly are now. This is what gave Game of Thrones the status it has today as a show willing to kill off anyone. I will never forget the feeling I had when they suddenly killed off my favorite character, the hero the show had set up, in such an unfair and cruel way. I've shown this show to so many people, and this is the first goal I always try to reach. Their reactions to this moment never fail to satisfy me. The episode is really good entertainment, but this moment is beyond anything so far. And my number one favorite episode of season one of Game of Thrones is the finale, episode 10, Fire and Blood. This was a tough pick. Again, Almost a blue, almost. The episode as a whole is actually fantastic. The only thing that stops it from being a blue is it slows way down in the middle with Pycelle's scene, and as much as I actually like it when they share a scene, the Varys and Baelish talk, but this episode is so full of moments and payoff that I can forgive it. Let's go. First, we have the astounding four standout moments I've always loved when Rob is hacking away at the tree in tears, mourning his father, and Catelyn comforts him. The line, and we will kill them all, always gives me the shivers, and knowing what comes later makes this scene even more tragic. Another moment is Catelyn's talk with Jamie. Yes, the King of the North scene is cool, but I just love the simple, honest chat these two have that begins with the most satisfying punch I've ever heard. <coughs> Dang. Jamie finally admits to pushing Bran, which is what set off this whole thing in the first place. It's very well acted and brilliantly done. Also, we have Drogo's death, which is so, so sad. The way his body slowly pulsates, fighting back suffocation, both breaks my heart and gives me the creeps. And finally, the ending of the season, the birth of the dragons. Look at that CGI. That is very well done. I mean, I still think those dragons are real. Like, they're, they're not CGI. They're just real. They're there. But honestly, this is really awesome. It's a fantastic way to end the season, and there's a reason this image is one of the most classic images from Game of Thrones. Overall, this finale really works well as a finale and barely beats Baylor for the best of the season. My philosophy is the ending is the most important part of the story, and Game of Thrones proves itself with this season finale. So overall, this season has two yellow greens, two greens, and a whopping six cyans. Literally the entire second half is nothing but cyan. You can tell why I love this show so much. No blues or purples this time, but don't worry, we'll see them soon. Adding up the point values I give to the colors because I'm crazy, uh, my overall rankings for this season would have round out to be a 3.8. My top five moments of the season include number five, Lady's Sentence. Number four, Viserys gets his crown. Number three, Bran's Fall. Number two, Ned versus Jaime. And number one, obviously, Ned's death. So overall, I would give Game of Thrones Season 1 a cyan. It's got a lot of exposition to build up in the first half, lots of characters and information you just have to absorb, but it all becomes worth it in the second half. Next Wednesday, I'll be ranking Season 2, with every Wednesday being a new season leading up to the final season premiere. Link to my Google Doc detailing all of my rankings is in the description below. Please share your rankings in the comments below, that way we can compare and contrast our different rankings. And thank you so much for watching. Subscribe for more Game of Thrones and other TV rankings, because there will be many coming soon. See ya!